In today's tutorial, we will see how we can track an object using an indexing array. Let's see the setup for the today's video. We have a chain index sensor which is connected at the I0.0 input of the PLC. Next we have a lid sensor, connected at the I0.2 input of the PLC. So, whenever the box with the lid comes in front this sensor, this sensor will detect the lid, and this information will be stored in the array, and whenever the index sensor gives a signal, this information will be shifted one step forward in this array. Each step or position on this conveyor will be assigned to an element in the array. The positions where the boxes with the lids are present will be indicated as 0 and positions where the boxes without lids are present will be indicated as 1. From now onwards we will call these positions as index. As you can see that, we have installed a box sensor at a 0.1, and a reject cylinder at Q0.0 output of the PLC. Now as you can see that at the index 12 if there is box without the lid, this will be rejected by the cylinder, and boxes with the lid will be allowed to be moved to the index 13. Now let's do some logic programming to run this setup. First we will open the TIA portal software and create a new project by giving it any suitable name and assigning it a save location as per your convenience. Next, we will double click on the add new device and again select any suitable CPU. Today we will be working on the S73152 DP PLC. Next, we will go to the programming blocks and add a new function block with SCL programming language. We will give it a name as track and reject block. Next, we have to create some input output and static variables for this block. We will create input variables for the index sensor lid sensor, and box at reject index sensors. We will connect these sensor tags at the input of this block. Next, for the output side we have only one variable, named as reject cylinder. Next, we will create some static tags. Create a timer one, this will be on delay timer, we will use this timer in this block to create a delay. Next, we need a variable x, it will be integer tag, and this will used in the block to create iterations for the for loop. Next, we will create a chain index array. This will be array of 15 boolean tags. This array will be used to track the position of the boxes without lids. Therefore, now all variables have been created. We can make some logic in the SCL code. First of all, we will store the lid sensor status in the chain index array element 1. We will write this code as chain index array 1 equals lid sensor. This line code will assign the lid sensor status to the chain index array element 1. So, whenever the box without the lid comes in front of this sensor, it will turn chain index array element 1 true. I would like to mention here that, in the SCL language the value on the right hand side is assigned to the variable on the left hand side. Next, we will use if instruction to run a for loop for 15 iterations. If index sensor then. This checks if the condition index sensor is true, the sensor is triggered. The following block of code will execute. For x, equals 15 to 1 by minus 1 do. This is a for loop that iterates with the variable x starting from 15 down to 1, decrementing by 1 each time by minus 1. The purpose of this loop is to handle each element of the chain index array in reverse order from position 15 down to 1. Chain index array x plus 1 equals chain index array x. Inside the loop, this line shifts the element at position x of the array, one position next to the right. For example, when x equals 3, the value at chain index array 3 is moved to chain index array 4. This effectively creates a shift of the values in the array, with each element pushed one position to the right. And for and end if. These close the for loop and the if block, respectively. If chain index array 12 and box at reject index then. Reject cylinder, equals true. If the chain index array element 12 contains a high bit and box comes in front of the reject sensor, this will turn on the reject cylinder. Next, we will start the timer 1 with reject cylinder, with preset time of the 1 second. Next, if the timer 1 output turns on, 
this will turn off the reject cylinder. Now our function block is ready, next we will open the OB1 block and drag and drop this function block on the network 1. This will create a DB for this function block. We will use this DB later in this video. Next, we will use the rising edge of the index sensor at the index sensor input of the block. So, whenever the chain indexes, this rising edge of the sensor as 0.0, .0 will trigger at the index sensor input of the block. Next we will assign the I0.2 input as lid sensor and I0.0 .0 input rising edge at the box at reject index input of the block. Next, assign the Q0.0 .0 output of the PLC at the reject cylinder output of the block. Next, we will open the watch table, and here we will insert tags of the track and reject block. We will add here the chain index array elements from 1 to 15. This whole array will track the boxes with the lids. Next, we will insert the reject cylinder tag to see the movement of the cylinder. Now the programming part is completed we will download this into the PLC and see how does it works. As you can see that if the box without the lid comes in front of the sensor as 0.2, it gets registered in the array index 1, and on the rising edge of the chain index sensor as 0.0, the values of the array indexes are shifted one index forward. Positions of the boxes without the lids are being tracked properly. Now as the box without the lid comes in front of the sensor as 0.1, this is the index 12 position, the value of the index 12 is true at this moment, this will trigger the reject cylinder and box without lid get rejected. So, that the end of today's tutorial video, I hope you like it, please do share like and subscribe my channel for more videos. Till next video, take care and goodbye.